To the average onlooker, it was just a pretty necklace. Whatever beauty it possessed had little to do with the way it shined, for it rarely showed the kind of glimmer expected from gold. It was simple, save for the small pendant suspended from it. The pendant was in the shape of a teardrop with a red garnet at its center, marked with a Chinese-style engraving of a bird. It was a gift from parents Haruna couldn't remember. Had she remembered them, surely they would have meant everything. Maybe then the necklace would be less sentimental. Maybe then it would just be a necklace. Maybe all of that would be true if they hadn't been taken from her. Cut from her life as though they'd never been. Haruna twirled at the chain, allowing the jewel to glide between her fingers. She turned it over, inspecting it out of boredom. Though the one side bore the stone, the other was marked with strokes that formed Japanese letters. She had always wondered what the word meant, what the necklace meant, but she never fully understood. There might have been times when she could have tried to find out the meaning of that word, but something always held her back. A weird foreboding, as if knowing would lead her somewhere she couldn't come back from. The truth was, she didn't know much about her Japanese father, and she certainly didn't know Japanese. After all, she was only half. All right, five minutes left until the bell. I'll be coming around to collect your tests. The teacher glimpsed down at the students, their pens dashing, fighting against all odds to beat the hands of the clock. Haruna glanced down at her own test paper with a yawn. She had managed to answer all 30 of her questions 15 minutes ago. She even proofread her answers three times since then. It might have been overkill, but it wasn't like playing with jewelry or staring at the clock made time go any faster. Ready to hand it in, Miss Mitsukai? The voice of the fifth period teacher carried over her. She looked up and tucked the necklace down the front of her blouse, the chain around the nape of her neck the sole evidence of anything being there at all. He smiled, crow's feet wrinkles tugging at the corner of his eyes. Yes, sir! Haruna said, returning his smile. She picked up her test paper and placed it on top of the small stack already in his hand. He responded with a nod and continued through the row of desks. Mr. Han had been her English teacher last year. It was a shame he was only filling in for their actual English teacher, Mr. Lee. Another two minutes passed and the bell rang. Fifth period and her second test for the day were over. The day and week were over. Finally. Haruna gathered her belongings and bolted out the door. The hallways erupted with a deluge of students and a chorus of laughter. Hey, Aruna! Haruna slowed, mouthing a sorry to one of her bandmates, one of the kids in the crowd who'd shouted. She flashed her phone. Text me later, okay? Haruna maneuvered strategically through the crowd, eyes scanning over it for a clear exit. The south wing was the best bet. Hardly any of those who knew were well enough for conversation, anyone in the senior grades, hung out there. She stole a glance at her phone for the time. She had roughly an hour to get home, drop off her stuff, and change. Manny would pick her up around then, and it would be the closest thing to a date she'd had in weeks. From the look of things, Haruna wouldn't be late, but she hated the feeling of being just in time. She forced her way through a group of 10th graders loitering around one of the side exits. Haruna! Haruna! <laughs> Several of them chimed their hellos at once, flailing and giggling. Oh great, so much for a shortcut. Haruna half-waved. Two of them were kids she'd tutored before. Don't hang around, Haruna said, half teasing, half scolding. It's the weekend. Go home already. Aw, you're no fun, one of them said, though Haruna could tell he was joking from the exaggerated pouty face he was making. She waved them off a second time, then flung through a set of two doors. She stopped short, blinded by thick gray smoke. A burning feeling stung in the back of her throat and nostrils. She brought her hands to her face, but the coughing fit started before she could think. Her eyes squinted. She was certain, whatever this smell was, it wasn't just tobacco. You okay? Haruna lifted her head. It was the usual gang of six. She knew two of them quite well. Five years to be exact. The one who had asked if she was okay? That was Seth Jordan. I I'm fine, Haruna managed finally, averting her gaze elsewhere as she readied herself to keep on going. I'm pretty sure smoking on school property is not allowed. 
Seth's face broke into a devious grin as he shed his cigarette butt. What are you, the headmaster? What are you, an idiot? <laughs> Several of his friends burst into roaring fits of laughter, jamming each other at the sides, pulling faces, shouting through bated breaths. Woo! She told you, Seth. It wasn't clear who they were mocking, whether it was her or Seth, but it didn't bother her in the slightest. After all, she was Hadana Catherine Mitsukai, head girl and future valedictorian. Hadana secured her bag strapped along her shoulder. She took one full footstep, but before she could take another, a shadow glided towards her. Oh no. Please no. Haruna started on a power walk. Don't look at him. Do not look. She could make a run for it. He'd have the upper hand, and it would be like he'd won, but at least she wouldn't have to... Haruna jerked to a stop. The shadow and its owner were now positioned in front of her, not letting her get away. It was him. It was definitely him. She recognized the dusty black high tops he often wore instead of dress shoes. Faltering back, she met Yu's gaze. Deep, dark brown eyes framed by sharp, dark eyebrows. He would have been half decent looking if he weren't menacing instead, possessing the lethal stare and faded scars of someone who'd gotten into one too many a fist fight. But the only thing certain about those eyes was their coldness, the way they seemed to be filled with nothing but hatred. Haruna hated those eyes. It was like staring back at the devil himself. What do you want? Haruna snapped, her voice shakier and less sure than she had meant it. His lips curled into a dry smirk. Haruna glared, her emotions Aww. raw. Here he was, messing around with his posse of idiots, his favorite hoodie draping over his not-tucked-in uniform shirt. He hadn't been in class and probably didn't care that he missed the test. Not unusual for a total slacker. Not going to answer? Then move out of my way, she spat, her unease eclipsed only by her disgust. He narrowed his eyes, and his movements were slow and deliberate as he drew the cigarette from his mouth. He leaned forward, his face a mere few inches from hers. After what could have been ten seconds, he blew. <laughs> Flustered, agitated, Haruna cupped a hand over her mouth. Breaking into yet another coughing fit, she roughly pushed past him. Her shoulder slammed against his as she gathered speed and stormed away. She could hear their howls of laughter. Haruna blinked back tears, ignoring their voices as she found a familiar footpath on her way home. So what? She didn't care what they thought of her. Opinions. Something everyone had, regardless of whether they had enough cells in their brain to rationalize them. She knew where she stood. She had worked hard ever since she started grade 7 at Shady Glen Academy. Only two types of people can manage entry into the top tier private schools on the west coast. The well-to-do and the brilliant. Haruna was a lucky combination of both. Well, okay. So she wasn't a genius so much as she studied hard and memorized facts and dates like a pro. And she wasn't fabulously wealthy so much as she was just very comfortable. Being the only grandchild of successful lawyers did have its perks. But entry didn't matter as much as survival. And Haruna didn't just survive at the academy, she flourished. Anti-social losers, like Seth and Ryu, were the bold exceptions to the rule. Everyone knew their admission was strictly because of connections. They never worked hard, never put too much effort into anything, practically sailed through life without a care in the world. While everyone else had to follow the rules, they never did. And she could never understand how they managed to maintain enrollment, let alone advance year after year into the next grade. Yu Debidu was the worst of the worst. He was the classic rebel without a cause, always looking up to no good even when he wasn't up to anything. Dazed, perpetually zoned out. Haruna checked her phone again. Ugh, a whole ten minutes wasted. As if this day hadn't been crazy enough. She placed a hand at her chest, feeling her breathing slowly return to normal. She focused, reminding herself that within an hour, she would be swept off her feet and whisked away by Prince Charmin. It was a good thing that Yu never spoke to her, and she never spoke to him. For Haruna, the reason was simple. As intimidating as Yu was when silent, he was scarier when he spoke. So Haruna supposed it was better to avoid him. Not that it was hard to do. They were from two different worlds. If anything, there was just one slight terribly insignificant thing they had in common. He was Japanese too. Well, only half. 